Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I am glad you made it. We have some movement on the uh, bill that's proposed to go ahead and take care of that $3 billion shortfall as well as put in some uh, guardrails, if you will, for the VA to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Remember that our benefits are on the fence of being on time or delayed. This is according to the VA. And if uh, this does not get all wrapped up and uh, fixed by September 20th, which is a whole two days away, uh, we could see a delay in payments. Yes, the VA gets funded, you know, for future, but the problem is, is that uh, the, their budget was not um, appropriate for this. So $3 billion uh, shortfall uh, could result in a disaster. So before we jump into it, I wanted to throw out a real quick thank you to Wild Willie to you. Wild Willie to you. Thank you so much for your comment, your super uh, comment. I really appreciate it. Really does help the channel. Uh, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you for your membership as well. And thank you for the kind words. Uh, I do my best. Thank you so much, Wild Willie to you. I appreciate you. All right. So this is uh, on the Hill. Now, again, today is September 18th. Yesterday, September uh, 17th, the House passes the uh, three billion dollar uh, bill, uh, and now it should be moving over to the Senate, of which we hope that they can fast track this with a you know a big vote and uh, get this moved forward. In any case, let's see what the, what's in this article. See if we can pick out any nuggets on what's uh, potentially going to happen here. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. Two asks or really look. Let the video run and hit the thumbs up. Two things don't cost you a nickel. A little bit of time, but I do appreciate it. And uh, if you want to support the channel in other ways, consider being a member. You can go to the homepage. You'll see the little highlighted member circles there uh, and uh, a join button. Thank you so much to all you members. All right, let's jump into this. So on the Hill, it starts off here. The House on Tuesday passed an emergency bill to address a roughly $3 billion shortfall facing the Department of Veterans Affairs. As officials warn, millions, and I believe the number's about $7 million, uh, millions of veterans' benefits are at risk in the coming weeks. The bill passed with bipartisan support on a voice vote and now heads to the Senate, where members on both sides are hopeful for a swift action this week. Quotation here, Thankfully, the House came together in a rare moment of bipartisanship to pass my bill that prevents this disaster and demands accountability with real oversight to make sure every dollar is spent right. Representative Mike Garcia, Republican from California, a member of the House Appropriations Committee who led the legislative effort, said in a statement on Tuesday, another quotation, our veterans deserve better than bureaucratic incompetence, and we're one step closer to fixing this broken system. Moving on, the measure calls for about <clears throat> $2.9 billion in funding uh, additional for the VA, which, uh, of which about $2.3 billion would go towards Veterans Benefits Administration, the VBA. That's where our compensation, pension, DIC, educational benefits, all of that stuff comes from. So $2.3 billion would go towards the Veterans Benefits Administration for compensation and pensions. Roughly $597 million would be put toward readjustment benefits. That's like your educational stuff. Moving on, uh, probably probably the majority, my guess, could be wrong, would be like VRNE, Veterans Readiness and Employment. Uh, moving on, the bill's passage comes weeks after the VA warned lawmakers that veterans' compensation and pension benefit payments, as well as their readjustment benefits, could be delayed next month if Congress doesn't provide additional funding in the days ahead. The agency has cited the PACT Act, a landmark law that passed with bipartisan support in 2022 as the key driver behind the budget shortfall, pointing to increases in enrollment in VA health care appointments and applications benefits. The bill, known as the Veterans Benefits Continuity and Accountability Supplemental Appropriations Act, bah, that's a mouthful, also requires the VA secretary to submit reporting to lawmakers detailing ways to improve forecasting and budget assumptions and mandates reporting on changes to estimates going forward. You would think, I'm just saying, that 
It wouldn't take Congress to tell the VA that that's what needs to happen, but here we are in a crazy world. And oh, by the way, the VA secretary is leaving. So if the VA secretary is leaving, I mean, obviously they'll still try to do whatever that is, but I mean, he's he's got a foot out the door now. Uh, he is not going to uh, stay uh, in that position. Um, he has basically given his notice that at the end of uh, Biden's term, uh, he will vacate the office regardless of who is in uh, uh, office. So with that, let's jump back into this. It additionally requires the Inspector General of the Department of Veterans Affairs to conduct a review of the circumstances surrounding the budget shortfall and the causes. Senators on both sides are pushing for a speedy approval. Important Senate, right? Because that's where we're at now. So senators on both sides are pushing for a speedy approval, particularly as Congress becomes embroiled in another budget showdown to avert a government shutdown ahead of the September 30th deadline. So we are just, I mean, it has been running the 90 yard, uh, run, excuse me, running the 100 yard dash in a 90 yard gym over and over and over again, right? Uh, is what it kind of feels like. So here we are, uh, again, talking about government shutdowns and uh, uh, short budgets and all that good stuff. So Senator John Tester, uh, uh, head of the subcommittee that oversees annual funding for the Department of Defense, told The Hill earlier Tuesday he expects senators to make a push to get it done if the House VA bill passes, which, by the way, it did, and that's what we're talking about. We'll see obstructionists can obstruct, but I think it's a bad mistake if they do, he said. A bipartisan effort to expedite legislation to address the shortfall before the August recess fell apart amid resistance from uh, conservatives and increased scrutiny on VA funding. So, look, it's it. here we are. In, in the middle of an election year, and there's going to be posturing all over the place on both sides. Uh, who cannot... Um, be impacted by this is veterans. I believe that veterans are absolutely a bipartisan issue. And um, we got two days. So here we are. In remarks Tuesday, Senator John Boozman uh, from Arkansas, top Republican on the subcommittee that crafts annual VA funding, expressed hopes that the Senate could fast track the bill and pass it via unanimous consent. And that is what we are expecting, I would say. But that process can also be held up if a single senator opposes passage. It's a death sentence, in my opinion. I mean, we will blast whoever that is um, everywhere if that's the case. With two days left, can't do it. Um, so sorry, you can't, you can't. It, I, there's no time uh, for anything else. The House has already passed it. Um, and now we just need that uh, uh, passage on the Senate side and move forward. There's provisions in there with guardrails and uh, holding the VA accountable and making uh, sure that uh, reports are being uh, furnished and also additional uh, looky-loo into it from the OIG. So, I mean, it's as good as we can get at this point and we need to move forward. You want to get a little more nuts and bolts on it, uh, use the $12 billion that's still short and uh, work that into that. So, here we go. My hope would be quotation here, that they send it over here to the, so he's saying that the House sends it to the Senate, and we do it by unanimous consent, Boozman told The Hill. If not, then we need to take whatever time, starting immediately, to get it passed. The VA has been pressing to receive the additional funding by September 20th, putting pressure on Congress. Now, look, the way this sounds is it almost sounds a little bit unfair fair, I think, to Congress in this situation because the VA originally submitted its budget request, I don't remember what month, we'll call it May, May-ish, submitted its budget request. Cool. We're good to go. Here's the numbers. Then it wasn't until two months after that or so that they came back, I believe in July, and said, oh, by the way, we're short um, three billion this fiscal year, and um, we're short twelve billion for next. So you know, I, I think there could, and that's why they want all of this oversight, right? This is why they want 
these guardrails put in place. This is why they want to get down to the bottom of why the forecast and budgeting uh, efforts were so off. Moving on, quotation, every day past the 20th increases the risk that we are not able to pay on time, Joshua Jacobs, the Undersecretary for Benefits for the VA said. So this is the VA saying this, every day past the 20th increases the risks that we are not able to pay on time. Joshua Jacobs, the Undersecretary for Benefits, the benefits that you receive for the VA said in a recent oversight hearing held by the House Committee on Veterans Affairs while explaining the steps the agency takes to transmit pay files to the Treasury Department. So it's not just, uh, you know, we got the money, we send the money, right? It's it. There's a little more in between those two things. Moving on, there are multiple steps that have to occur between us submitting the pay file, the Treasury Department processing it, and those payments being made either through direct deposit, through uh, EFTS to financial institutions or to the approximately 2% small number, but it's a big number of, it's a big, it's a low percentage of a big number, which is a lot of people, if that makes sense, to the approximately 2% of veterans and survivors who receive paper checks to print and send those checks. We do have some room built in because occasionally there are challenges with those pay files that we have to fix and then correct before we transmit it, he said. But it's very hard to go back and recoup those monies after we've submitted it. I will also add, we have the ability to accelerate the timeline for direct deposit. It does come with an additional risk. The real challenge and the real length of, and process is those veterans and survivors with checks because that process is time consuming and particularly for veterans and survivors in rural areas, there may be a delay for up to two weeks. So that's it, that's where we're at. We are now waiting on uh, the Senate. Reach out to your Senator's office. They all have cell phones. They all have uh, that capability, I believe me, if, if a senator's office received a thousand phone calls about passing this piece of legislation uh, and they were thinking that they wanted to be, I don't know, on a soapbox about it, they'll probably sit back down a little bit and just vote, right? So make the phone calls, send the emails. The uh, staffer there that handles this stuff will go, oh, wow, we got this huge influx. I'm going to send a text to the senator so they're aware they're, they're getting a lot of constituent uh, um, vibrato, if you know what I mean. So with that, thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.